Diego Nunez, 17 wins, 3 losses. Bart Palaszewski, 36 and 15. This is one hell of a fight. This is a stacked card from the UFC on Friday night. Nunez uh, coming off a decision loss to Dennis Siver on April 14th in his last bout, while Palaszewski last fought on February 26th of this year at UFC 144. Also coming off a unanimous decision loss, he lost to Hatsu Hioki. Palaszewski, 36 wins, 17 via knockout with 11 submissions. Nunez, 6 of 17 wins via submission with 6 decisions and 5 knockouts. Nunez with wins over Mike Brown, Rafael Asuncao, and Manny Gamborian is 29 years old from Brazil, representing Team Nova Uniao and Black House. He has uh, lost, though, two of his last three despite being 6-3 and three combined in the WEC and UFC. Palaszewski has a 5-4 and four WEC-UFC combined record with 11 of 15 losses via decision, three submissions, and one TKO. He does have impressive wins, though, over Ivan Menjavar, Tyson Griffin, and Anthony Pettis. Palaszewski, born in Poland, fighting out of Wonder Lake, Illinois, with Team Curran. He's got a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. This is a uh, a brilliant fight between two great featherweights. Again, very tough to call here. I am actually don't think it's that tough to call. Palaszewski has looked very impressive at moments, but whenever he has stepped up in competition, I don't think that he's ever been able to, uh, even though he's got wins over Anthony Pettis and Tyson Griffin, I don't know if he's ever really been able to step up that much. The same can be said about Diego Nunez. Nunez was uh, 17-1 and and then uh, got faced up against a much bigger, much larger Kenny Florian, who, you know, didn't even look that impressive, and the only reason Nunez lost that bout is because I personally believe he gassed himself out in that first round. The Dennis Siver fight was kind of an eye-opener. Dennis Siver also another big lightweight making the drop down to featherweight and taking him on. Whereas Palaszewski is a natural featherweight and this is more of an even matchup. Diego Nunez still in our top 10. He's 17-3. and three. I like D- Diego Nunez all day on Friday for yeah. this bout. Yeah, I think this is a close one, but uh, I'm going to go with Diego Nunez uh, as well. He didn't look great in his last fight, but I expect him to bounce back. He's a real tough guy coming out of a great camp and has shown some really good skills uh, in the past. We go to Jacob Volkman taking on Shane Roller, another Fuel TV prelim. Volkman 14-3, and Roller 11-6, and this one uh, at lightweight. Volkman coming off a submission loss to Paul Sass on May the 26th in his last bout, while Shane Roller coming off a decision victory over John Alessio on July the 7th. Volkman, 14 wins, 3 losses, 14 of those wins, uh, 14 wins, 8 of those via decision with 6 submissions. He's lost 3 times, but to tough fighters, uh, twice via submission, one of those to Martin Campman, and one decision to Paulo Tiago in 2009. All those losses, uh, well, those two losses, rather, at welterweight, and his last loss was his first at lightweight it actually snapped a five fight win streak in his undefeated streak at 155 pounds volkman 32 years old from minnesota fighting in his home state was an nc2a division one wrestler and has a five and three ufc record shane roller has gone eight and five in the wec and ufc combined he's 33 years old from oklahoma was also an nc2a division one wrestler he has won six of eleven via submission with three knockouts. He has lost uh, six times in his career, three via knockout, two submissions, and one decision. Roller and Volkman, uh, an interesting bout between two Division I wrestlers, uh, but I think Jacob Volkman uh, is the man for the job in this fight. Yeah, I can't disagree with you, Dave. Jacob Volkman, 14-3. and three. He's looked very impressive. Roller may have picked up a unanimous decision over John Alessio, but that was a lay-and-pray victory, and he's also been knocked out three times uh, and submitted, especially that when he was submitted by TJ Grant. Man, was that ever impressive. Shane Roller, I believe, is one of those lightweights that is uh, a fantastic fighter. However, he's not top 10 at all and you know, barely cracking the top 20, in my opinion, whereas Jacob Volkman is kind of edging his way down with that five-fight win streak after it being snapped last time. But, you know, Paul Sass, a jiu-jitsu ace, a, there's nothing to be ashamed about right. losing to Paul Sass. 
Uh, I, I like Volkman all day in this. Let's move on to the next fight, Dave. Right. Tiago Tavares, 17-14-1, and one, uh, minus 240, the favorite, taking on Dennis Hallman, 51-14-2, and two, plus 190, uh, the dog in a lightweight action. This 50, should be great. 51 wins for Dennis Hallman. Yeah. This is uh, another lightweight bout. Hallman, 40 of those wins via submission. Unbelievable. That's impressive stuff. Tavares, though, 11 of 17 wins via submission. That's also very impressive. Both of these guys like to tap people out. Uh, Tavares has never been submitted. He's lost four times, twice via knockout, twice via decision. Hallman also never been submitted. Eight decision losses and six knockout losses. Hallman, 36 years old. Tavares, 27 years old. Hallman is from Olympia, Washington, and made his pro debut in 2000 in rather 1997. That's a long time. Uh, Tiago Tavares from Brazil, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, who made his pro debut in 2003. Tavares 7-4 and 1 in the UFC. Hallman 3 and 2. You know, I want to see if Dennis Hallman can actually make 155 pounds. He beat John McDessie via submission in his last fight, but weighed in at 158 and a half, wasn't able to make 155. Uh, you know, I got a question whether he's going to be able to do it in this one. Either way, I like Tiago Tavares. Uh, I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going with the dog on this. Dennis Hallman has fought over uh, <laughs> 67 times in, in his MMA career. He's looked unbelievably impressive. He beat Matt Hughes twice at welterweight when Matt Hughes was Matt Hughes and that unbelievable domination of Mac John McDessie back at UFC 140 in December of 2011 was a real eye-opener. He's a heavy hitter. He's a submission specialist and I'd like to see if he can actually make 155 pounds. I think he can do a lot of damage and I believe that at this point, Hallman is taking the weight cut a lot more seriously. He's had over uh, 10 months to prepare for this, to die it properly and cut that weight. I like Dennis Hallman, the dog in this bout. We move along to Danny Castillo taking on Michael Johnson. This one was actually supposed to take place at UFC 151 on September 1st, but this is one of those fights that got moved down to another card, so it takes place on Friday night, UFC on FX5. Castillo coming off a decision win over John Cholish. Very impressive win on May the 5th at UFC on Fox uh, and uh, also Johnson fighting on that same card. He got another impressive win over Tony Ferguson, also a unanimous decision. Johnson, 11 wins, five of those via knockout. Castillo, 14 wins, five of those via knockout. Castillo has lost four times, twice via submission, one knockout, one decision, while Johnson has lost six times, five of those via submission, and once via decision. Johnson, 26 years old representing the Black Zillions in Boca Raton, Florida. He's got a 3-2 and two UFC record, but is currently riding a two-fight win streak. Castillo, 33 years old, from Sacramento, California, representing Team Alpha Male, has a 9-4 and four WEC UFC combined record and is riding a three-fight win streak into this one. I've liked what I've seen from Michael Johnson very much since he lost the Ultimate Fighter 12 finale in 2010 to Jonathan Brookins. I think that Johnson is... Uh, upping his game at a rapid rate. He's only 26 years old. He's training with one of the best rising camps in MMA right now, the Black Zillions in Florida. I'm going to go with Michael Johnson to beat Danny Castillo on Friday night. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be a, a tough one to call, in my opinion. Castillo, although... Uh, you know, he's coming off uh, a big win over John Cholis, and Castillo has uh, won a lot of fights in a row, three fights in the UFC so far. He's looked fantastic. In my opinion, he's kind of looking like the best of that alpha male camp. Uh, I'm kind of twisted on this because I agree that Johnson has rapidly improved uh, since you know going to the Black Zillions and uh, adjusting some of his style, I just wasn't overly impressed with that Ferguson fight. I'm going to have to go with Castillo on this one. Going the other way, Dave. All right, going the other way with Castillo. I got Johnson.